The Dead Sea just fulfilled an ancient prophecy, and Christians around the world are in disbelief. So what exactly happened? And more importantly, what's going to happen next? Well, before we answer those questions, make sure you take a second to subscribe so we can make God the biggest channel in the world. Now, let's get back into it. The Dead Sea is home to huge sinkholes. These sinkholes are created when fresh water enters below the surface and combines with the salt and silt layers that comprise the white section of the beach. When the salt melts, it leaves behind a massive hole. The crazy thing is that some of these sinkholes are actually developing underwater. Driftwood piles, which are bleached white and look like old bones, surround the shore. If water bodies were to be ghost towns, Dead Sea would be at the top of the list. It's the lowest point on the planet, the hottest location in Israel, and no visible life can survive in its waters. With a moniker like the Dead Sea, one could anticipate a letdown. But the place's wonder never fades from the memories of those who visit. There's truly nothing else like it on Earth. Under the Dead Sea, fresh water from springs dissolves the salt and pushes through the silt, causing the ground to collapse. There's something beautiful about this, despite the fact that it may sound like a natural disaster given the massive holes that are popping up everywhere. It resembles a tiny oasis surrounded by a barren wasteland of salt. The minerals left behind create distinct colours in the sinkholes. And you know what? The shoreline of the Dead Sea is dotted with these sinkholes. Sinkholes are increasingly appearing in some of the most dynamic areas globally around the Dead Sea and are posing serious problems. Why are the roads and beaches near the Dead Sea being closed? Sinkholes create major problems. They are appearing everywhere and causing the ground to become unstable, which is why beaches and roads need to be closed. It's too risky for people to use these places in a safe manner. Why is it that no one in this area can construct anything? Insurance companies won't cover the risks and nobody can build anything here. It's too risky to invest in building projects because of sinkholes and unstable ground. However, this is where it becomes intriguing. There is also life emerging from these sinkholes. Birds are chirping, suggesting that this area could be a hotspot for bird migration. The sinkholes surround lush greenery and people have even spotted fish in them. Yes, those are real fish. This demonstrates that salt levels are falling and that life is now able to flourish in previously dry areas. The Dead Sea, a salt lake with Israel and Palestine to the west and Jordan to the east, has been dead for as long as recorded history. Scientists originally believed that because the lake is almost 10 times saltier than the ocean, neither sea life nor plant life could live there. In 2011, scientists found evidence of life beneath the Dead Sea. Additionally, breaking Israel news revealed that freshwater ponds brimming with fish and fauna have been found around the Dead Sea's shores. This discovery aligns perfectly with the prediction in the book of Zechariah. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the Dead Sea and the other half to the Mediterranean Sea. This will happen for the summer as well as the winter. The Dead Sea is to the east of Jerusalem, and the book of Zechariah foretells that waters will flow from Jerusalem to the Eastern Sea. Then there is Ezekiel, who describes fishermen working at the Dead Sea and the Salt Sea turning fresh. A glimpse of this prophecy's fulfillment is occurring right before our eyes. Take a look at this fresh water along the Dead Sea's shore. It's amazing to witness up close. It's incredibly spiritually uplifting to, to go through this and see prophecy come to pass. Just take a glance at this colourful vegetation to see how the Dead Sea is reviving. And we might even see fish coming out of these sinkholes if we're lucky. The lake's borders are more than 400 metres below sea level, and a thick layer of salt covers them, killing all flora. Scripture says that the area was once a lush, well-watered land. The fire and brimstone from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah reduced that valley to a wasteland, as recorded in Genesis chapter 13 verse 10. But, in 2011, a group of scientists from Ben Gurion University executed divers to the Dead Sea's bottom, where they saw massive craters on the ocean floor. 
These craters, which were covered in microbial mats, were gushing fresh water, indicating that the Dead Sea was not completely dead. Scientists in the media had failed to notice the inexplicable phenomenon that appeared to defy natural rules according to BIN. Samantha Siegel, a Jewish American residing in Jerusalem, discovered that startling find while out on her regular nature trek in the desert and along the Dead Sea's shoreline. When Siegel first discovered the fish in the pond, she had no idea of its significance. She remembered finding it pretty cool and commented on how the Dead Sea appeared to be flourishing. She didn't realize the link until several months later when she reread the prophecy. According to her, the connection is undeniable and right in front of your face. It was a detailed fulfillment of the prophecy, Siegel noted. She said that each time she went, a family of ducks welcomed her in addition to the fish. She noted how the scene powerfully illustrated the restoration of life to the world, drawing comparisons between it and the prophesied resurrection of the dead. In the Dead Sea, Siegel sees something significant. Siegel explained that the Dead Sea is the lowest point on Earth, hence its waters are perfect for floating. She pointed out that buoyancy prevented someone from drowning even if they tried or didn't know how to swim. Using this as a metaphor, she said that no matter how low a person feels, God will always be there to bring them up, just as one cannot drown in the Dead Sea. Have you ever wondered why tourists come to the Dead Sea to experience its buoyancy? How come the Dead Sea won't let you sink? The salinity of the Dead Sea is so intense that people can float with the water surface at their chest and stand motionless without touching the bottom. It was a strange feeling. It's easy for many who float on their backs to read a book. If you toss a stick into the surface, it will seem to be lying on a mirror. During the Jewish revolt in AD 68, the historian Josephus records an amazing event. Vespasian went to the Dead Sea to verify the fabled assertion that no one could drown. He tied up some people who couldn't swim and threw them into the water. Whether you swim or not, the story serves as a helpful reminder for everyone to keep water out of their mouths and eyes unless they enjoy throwing up and crying. Indeed, breathing in water can be extremely dangerous. Those sensible cautions followed, and the Dead Sea rewards every tourist with an experience that will never be forgotten. Many swimmers take handfuls of black mud and smear it all over their bodies when wading into the brackish water, all in the hopes of capturing a striking photo. Throughout history, the Dead Sea has had several names. The Bible refers to it as the Eastern Sea, the Salt Sea, and the Sea. This region has had a number of historical names, including the Devil's Sea, the Stinking Sea, and the Sea of Asphalt. Believe it or not, the area was well watered, once lush and lovely, comparable to the Garden of Eden. However, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 13 verse 10, Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 23, and Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 6, God's wrath on Sodom and Gomorrah changed the region's fertility and turned it into a barren expanse that symbolized judgment on sin. The Dead Sea surface is always foggy because of evaporation that lingers above it. The smoke rising from the valley resembles a furnace after Sodom's ruin, as depicted in Genesis chapter 19 verse 28. The Dead Sea serves as a modern-day symbol for the remains of God's judgment on sin. However, scripture assures us that the Dead Sea will come to life once more. Water will flow from Jerusalem's Temple Mount during the Millennial Kingdom when Jesus rules over the planet. The Dead Sea shoreline will see an increase of fishermen, as predicted by Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 8 to 11 and Zechariah chapter 14 verse 8. What a powerful illustration of God's ability to bring life from the dead. Ezekiel, a prophet who lived in exile in Babylon from 597 BC, describes in chapter 47 a vision of a river that flows from the temple in Jerusalem all the way down to the Dead Sea. The river sustains fish that are the same species as those found in the Mediterranean and brings new life wherever it flows. Let's take a closer look at what Ezekiel said in chapter 47 verses 8 to 11. Ezekiel wrote, This water flows toward the eastern region and descends into the Arabah, the Jordan Valley, where it enters the Dead Sea. The water in the sea grows fresh as it empties into it. Where the river flows, countless creatures thrive. 
as this water travels, it transforms the saline water into fresh water, creating a thriving environment for fish and other life forms along the river's path. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to En Eglame. There will be places for spreading nets. There will be a wide variety of fish, including fish from the Mediterranean and the Great Sea. The last portion of Ezekiel's book contains his vision, which describes the Jewish people's anticipated return to their homeland and God. The resurrection of this lifeless body of water represents a future moment when Israel's fortunes, which were once downtrodden and abandoned, will be fully restored. And it's happening right now. Israel's economy is thriving and it's become a powerful nation on the global stage. It's like seeing prophecy come to pass right before our eyes. A growing number of people believe that Jesus is the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. They believe Jesus will fulfill the prophecy by giving the Jews a new heart and sprinkling them clean of their sins, just like the Dead Sea. This ultimate restoration will happen when they return from all the nations where they were scattered for rejecting God's ways. You can be confident that every scripture prophecy will come to pass exactly as written. Approximately 75% of Ezekiel's prophecies, or 81% of all Bible prophecies, have already come to pass precisely on time. The final page of the Bible features a picture of a river of life flowing from God's throne from the book of Revelation, which tells the story of what will happen in the days leading up to the second coming. We're living in more momentous times than ever before, with the biblical symbolism of life from the dead pointing to both Israel and the return of our Messiah. It's currently unfolding just as Ezekiel predicted 2600 years ago. One of his well-known prophecies, often seen as allegorical rather than literal, is becoming a reality. In short, the Dead Sea is coming back to life. When the Dead Sea is alive again, what will we call it? If you made it all the way to this part in the video, you may qualify for our membership, so you might want to listen closely. It's an exclusive area where we release videos that we cannot show to the general public yet. You'll get to see everything first and learn about truths that we cannot reveal anywhere else. If you want to learn more, hit the link on the left of the screen or check out the link in the pinned comment.